Ladies and gentlemen, there she is in Lake Oswego. Every two weeks we drop out there or we drop in there or we go there and find out what's <laughs> happening to the wonderful world of Ronnie Bennett. Hello, Ronnie. Good morning. How are you? The, the, in case people, this is the first time you've ever joined us. The reason her last name is Bennett is pure coincidence. Anyway. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> Actually, she married me at one point, and then she she didn't want to get rid of the name. So, you know. You know, if we hadn't gotten divorced, we would have been married, can it possibly be 65 years? Oh, boy. I'm not sure I can't do the math that quickly. <laughs> oh, boy. Well, at least maybe we would have had kids, and then we would have had somebody to take care of us. You know. don't, don't you remember a discussion we once had when we were living in Riverdale in that apartment mm -hmm. about That's it? That's in New York City, folks. Go ahead. And we it was referencing the cats that we thought we, it was only a half serious conversation or maybe half funny, mm -hmm. but decided we weren't going to have children because it was so much more work. With the cats, you just put the food and the water down on the floor and walk right, away. Right. <laughs> Right, they clean themselves. Right, they take care of everything. <laughs> you know. And if you get enough of them like we did, they just ignore you. <laughs> right, yes. <laughs> when we broke up, you left me with five cats. No, four. Really? Where did the fifth one come from? Hmm. Hmm. Well, anyway, enough cats. Yes. Uh, but it, they, they literally took over the house. I mean, they ran the house. I, I, I had no say-so in the matter. I, that wasn't... I mean, that happened after I was gone? Well, it, when you were there, you ruled the house, and I had no say-so in the matter. So, <laughs> oh, so there wasn't it's much difference. There wasn't much you, difference. Yeah, but, uh, you know. Yeah. Do you still remember the name of all the cats? Yavis, Yavis and Shadif. <laughs> Shavis and Yadif. And, um, no. Bert and Charlie. Oh, right. Charlie was a great cat. Charlie was the best cat, the smartest cat I ever had. I mean, bar none. Just amazing. And I would sit there watching television, and he would come up on the bed and sit on the pillow next to me with his paw around my, uh, around my shoulder like, so hey, hey, pal. Yeah. yeah, I really miss having a cat. I'd spent two years, and I really, really miss him. Well, I, I miss having a cat, but then I figure at my age, he's going to live longer than me, and I, uh, you know, I don't, I don't want something looking at me going, you're going to be gone, but I'm still going to be here. I just, uh, oh, yeah. you know, I thought about it, and I had a friend, and listen to this, a friend in San Francisco, mm -hmm. and, and I know through the blog, and we'd been talking, and I talked about at me really missing having a cat, and the cat that she had she had had recently died. And I got a note from her after our conversation saying, for because, you know, I'm old and I'm sick, that it wouldn't be fair to get a cat and who was going to take it, and, you know, and you'd feel bad about all that. She said she would drive up from San Francisco and get it. Is that an offer or what? That, that, that is an offer. Of course, yeah. and, and that cat, I, I got to say something. I, I love you, and I will love any cat that you have. However, that cat was not the most friendly cat I've ever had to deal with. Because you oh, left him left with him me. I left him with you to stay, to, when I had to go away, to stay with you that time, yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, he was a little diffident, we could put it maybe that way. Standoffish. That's putting it mildly. Yeah, what the cat would do, what the cat would do was would never come over and have anything to do with me unless I was doing some work at the computer. <laughs> and then he was all he was all over my legs and you know everything else. And then the minute because I you stopped, were you were looking at something else other than him. That's what I mean. Yeah. That's a cat trait, not just him. Yeah, yeah. Well, I don't know. I'll tell you. Well, Shabbos, which was our my my favorite cat I ever had because I loved him. He was so zen, you know. Uh, <laughs> uh, and, and she loves Shabbos as well. He was a terrific cat, you know, and he, he didn't demand attention, although he would sit on top of the television set 
and we couldn't figure out whether cats sat on top. This was the old days, not with the flat screens, but with the actual television sets. We couldn't figure out if they sat on top of the television set because that's where everybody was staring, or it was also warm. Or also that it was warm. Yeah. yeah. So. And their and their tail then would hang down. Oh yeah, well it was like a like a window washer. You know, back yeah. and forth in front of the screen. Yeah. And I have to get up and move the cat, so we could watch <laughs> television. People don't remember those days, but they today a cat couldn't sit on top of a television screen. No, pretty hard. <laughs> yeah. It, it, but I wonder if one cat says to another cat, "When I was a kitten." <laughs> Funny. We had yeah. television sets we could sit on. And they were warm. And they were warm. <laughs> so anyway, so anyway, so um you even you've been just feeling yeah. oh, it's been a hard week. I had a meltdown on Monday. Um because you know, I'm in hospice now. Did we talk about that? No, but you don't look like it. Well, that's People think you go in hospice two days before you die. That's not the time to do it. It's time to do it long before that. Mm -hmm. What it does, the difference between palliative care and hospice care is that with palliative care, although they take care of you in terms of comfort, mm -hmm. you can also be treated in a way that might cure or mm -hmm. cure a disease or prolong your life. Mm -hmm. You stop all that when you go into hospice and it's all comfort care. And I have the most amazing team. But this week, my God, they all came. I've got more. Another one coming tomorrow, um, Thursday. But yesterday was just I, the, 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 I have a nurse, an RN, who is also my case manager. I have a social worker. I have an aide for when I need personal care help, mm -hmm. which I don't yet. But if I live long enough, I probably will. Mm -hmm. Um a social worker, um, and there's somebody else I'm leaving out, <laughs> and, and yesterday three of them came, and I'm, I, you know, I live alone, because of the pandemic, you know, we, none of us have very many guests or anything, or go out much, and I was exhausted yesterday, just exhausted. Really? I, well, I was one after another, plus, there were a couple of deliveries, and one of the was a pickup with some equipment. And I thought, well, how long does that take? Do you get the equipment and walk out of the house? Well, there was paperwork, and there was something else and something else, and it took 15 or 20 minutes. And it was just, by the time the last person left in the afternoon, I was, I was so wiped out, I got into bed at 4.30. Mm -hmm. So, so in, in other words, you're not in a hospice. You are in no, hospice. No, hospice is mostly done at home these days. Oh, really? Okay. There are There's hospice also in hospitals, nursing homes, um, in, uh, and in freestanding hospices. Um, did you lose me? No, I'm listening to you. Okay. Uh, and, and, but most commonly at home. And they, you know, when the first nurse came two weeks ago to do all of the orientation she was here for four hours but when we were just setting up the appointment <clears throat> i assumed that i would have to go to their offices for all of this stuff we had to go through mm -hmm. and, i don't know from now on we always come to you i that's just wonderful that's just wonderful because my energy has disappeared so much of my energy has disappeared mm -hmm. very big thing <clears throat> Even for me to drive sometimes the short distance to the grocery store. Yeah. And and it's just, and especially to drive somewhere I haven't been before mm -hmm. and don't know the way and don't know what can go wrong. <clears throat> I'm just not very good at that anymore than I was when I, you know, a few years ago. So, so I'm very grateful. And then I had a problem with a prescription um, that I wrote about for Wednesday's Today, Wednesday's Post. And the nurse who'd been here when we had the problem <clears throat> later that day on her own time, she went home and spent two hours making phone calls and getting through all the bureaucracy and all the long times on hold that you go through and that sort of thing. And called, she called me in the evening and said, you should know within three days if you have been 
accepted for an extension of this discount for a certain drug that I can't afford without the discount. And, um, and the next morning, Tuesday morning, nine o'clock, I, it was a robot call. It wasn't a real person, but I identified the company and said that the extension for my discount on, on the drug had been approved. Yeah. And I just, you know, I just lost it on Monday when she and I kept running into just intransigent people. One person who said, no, 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 that didn't happen that way last year. Yes, it did. I was there. I, you know, I know what happened. And she said, no, it doesn't happen that way. And she said that two or three times. And, you know, you kind of get crazy in the head when somebody tells you that your red sweater is green. Yeah, yeah. I mean, what, I mean, it's like living with Trump every day in your life. You know? You, know, you know what I was thinking? God bless these people who work hospice. Because oh, and, and all of the medical workers. All of them. Yeah. They're different from you and me. Yeah. I mean, it, 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 you know, because it really is pretty terrific what they do. It's amazing, and that's what I mean about, you know, most of us choose some other kind of life. Nobody ever got rich working for hospice or a hospital, you know, or being a doctor or a nurse. Nobody ever, well, maybe the surgeons, but, you know, mm. um, nobody really gets rich in that. You do those kinds of work because you want to help people who can't help themselves. Yeah. And, and think about now all the people that are, in all of that enormous PPE in hospitals treating the people with the virus. Yeah. They get up, I, I think about this often, they get up in the morning and you yawn and you stretch, okay, I gotta get ready for work and they're, oh, maybe I'll get the virus today. I've gotta be careful. And you go through your morning routine and you still go to work every day and wrap yourself up in all that PPE and go there with all those infectious people because you believe in taking care of them, and they can't take care of when they can't take care of themselves. Yeah, but, you know, I was thinking about the hospice people. <clears throat> I mean, really, most when they when they're doing hospice for somebody, they know that person's life is fading away, fading <laughs> away, and yeah. that they're at some point, no matter how much they get to know this person, are going to have to deal with them passing. Mm -hmm. um, that's got to be a difficult thing on them. You know, I, so while I ask people like that about that, exactly your mm -hmm. question, and <clears throat> they give varying answers about, but I got to know that person, and I like that person, you know? They, they never told me they disliked somebody. They, there must be ones they well, dislike, oh, but they do their work anyway. I would wonder how much they involve themselves in people like yourself, knowing that their time here is limited and that if they get too emotionally involved, okay, with that person, that they're going to well, have to go through grief. I think they just do it and they do go through the grief. Bless them. The other day, yesterday, I think it was Tuesday, um, after that approval had come in later in the, in the early afternoon, my nurse, who's my case manager, came by, and it was just she was in the neighborhood, and she'd done this wonderful thing for me. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> Excuse me, wanted to come by, and we ended up we just talked for an hour and got to know each other. But we've only seen each other twice before briefly, and got to know each other better, and had a wonderful time talking. Um, and oh, I must tell you something. She was born and raised in. South Korea, mm -hmm. and and she she speaks English with about this much of an accent, hardly any accent at all. Mm -hmm. And she came here in her teen years, or going like going on college years, I think. And I asked her how she learned English because she speaks English to me, except for this teeny, teeny, tiny accent, um, like a native. And she said, "This is the most wonderful thing." She and her, she grew up in her family that they all together every week watched Dallas, and that's how she learned English. <laughs> and she said when she first came here, she thought that all Americans had big sprawling ranch houses, and she thought that women and housewives 
did the dishes and, and cooked the dinner and everything in dresses and high heeled shoes. <laughs> well, anyway, uh, besides all of that, uh, uh, how's things in Oregon? Now, I looked at the map today that Cuomo puts up of the states that are the most affected. And uh, uh, Oregon seems to be not on that list, okay? Oregon is numbers are increasing dramatically. However, we started way down here. Yeah. There had hardly been any. You know, I think we had a week or two ago, there were only just over 100 deaths. Yeah. And now it's over 200. And it's, it doesn't look like a Texas or a New York or Arizona, Florida, because we have far fewer people. And we seem to be doing pretty well until this spike has been happening in a number of places. Well, it doesn't seem to be overwhelming. Right. I mean, yeah. it's lower in that we started so much lower. But it doesn't seem like it's overwhelming the system there. <coughs> I don't think so yet. You know? Yeah. Um, because in places like Texas, I mean, I just, I, I, you know, I, in, in one respect, I go, Boy, those governors down there were just terrible, and now they're getting what they deserve. But unfortunately, so are the people of those states. You know, I mean, it, it, it's sad, the attitude about this. They, they've turned a, a virus into a political issue. Well, worse, it went further. I think we're in an apocalypse. Oh, I, I don't disagree with you. I mean, if you were to draw up a science fiction movie, it would look pretty much like this. Yes. You know, yes. you go down to Broadway. And look at Broadway. Just go online there like, uh, you know, cams that do Broadway. You look at it, it looks like an, a movie from an apocalypse. Right. Yes, I remember. I've seen those photos. Um, you know, what bothered, we, just this week, or maybe it was last week, but very recently, mm. the governor issued a mask edict for when you're out and about. Yeah. I can't tell you that most of the people I see, old people particularly, are not wearing them. It makes me nuts. It makes me nuts. Why does it put a mask on? It makes me nuts in this neighborhood when I walk down the street. And I would say Marjorie says it's more like 60, uh, 40, 60% 60 are wearing masks, 40 aren't. I say it's the other way. I tell you, I see about 75% of the people in this neighborhood not wearing masks. And of course, I live in a very predominantly black neighborhood. So the predominant amount of people not wearing masks are black. And I'm thinking, and you better not wear a Black Lives Matter t-shirt if you're not wearing a mask, because you're not doing the very thing that will help Black Lives Matter. Because that shouldn't just refer to whether somebody's being racist or not, it should also refer to your respect for them and their life. Well, you know, this all went wrong from the beginning because there were so many mixed messages. Dr. Fauci said in the beginning that masks don't do anything for you, it's only other people. Mm -hmm. and or, or maybe it was vice versa. I, there's so much information you can't confirm that it gets all mixed up. But... But in the beginning, it was iffy of whether wearing a mask was useful. Do you remember that period? I remember that period. Yes. I, I don't remember it here. And you never point. recover from that kind of thing. You know, and now some, I guess it's mostly far-right political people have turned it into a, it's a hoax or it's a political thing. It means you don't like Donald Trump if you wear a mask uh, and that sort of thing. Um, you know, the other thing that's going on that you can just plug into the apocalypse is it seems to me that every single morning, every morning, I get up, I make the coffee, turn on the computer and look at the news, and every morning, Donald Trump has done something that will harm, maim, or kill somebody. Yesterday, that just put me around the bend, was foreign college students here, uh, if their college was only going to have long distance teaching, he was going to deport them unless they went to a college where they had in-person teaching. Well, a whole lot of those students, even if you bought the idea, which I don't, a whole lot of those students can't go home because their countries don't let anybody from America in to their countries now. Or if you go in, you have to be quarantined. No, you can, no, oh, you really? do, no. You're not, a, all of Europe, the European Union, you cannot go in if you're coming from America. 
And, and, and today there was some, oh, today he's going to, he says, he's going to snatch away federal funding for schools, public schools that don't, uh, this fall, who don't open the schools to in-person te- you know, know, you, younger. You know, uh, Cuomo went on today and said legally he can't do that. Only the governors right. can decide what's going to go on in their state. That's by by constitutional edict. And well, that, that he can't do that. He can't do that. He thinks he can do anything he wants. Well, to. I don't know. I don't know that he can't withhold federal funds. I think he might be able to do that. Here's what Cuomo said about that. He said, you already withhold federal funds. You don't pay us for this. You don't pay us for that. You're oh, making, I see. Okay. You're making. Is he them. back to doing doing his morning he routine? Does, he does them every about th- maybe three, twice, three times a week now. Okay. You know, and um, it, it, it we're 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 still clean here. You know, it, you're gonna love this because you're a New Yorker, tried and true. Marjorie finally the other day decided to go into her office to pick up the mail. All right, which had been stacked up literally this high, uh, and she went through all of it. And then she did a few things, and finally she had to come home, so she said, ah, screw it, I'll try the subway. She took the subway. She said it was absolutely, uh, uh, what was, where was I going with that? I, I, I saw no kidding. Coming home on the subway, Marjorie. Oh, she went on the subway. So she went on the subway. She said it has never been so clean in her life. <laughs> I clean them it, every night. She said you wouldn't believe how clean they are. They're sparkling. They're, they're, you, 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 and then everybody's sitting a distance from each other, and everybody's wearing masks. She says it may be the safest place to be. Isn't that interesting? Because, you know, I, somebody I was talking to yesterday about how well New York has done in terms of bringing down the numbers mm-hmm. from the virus. Yeah. Uh, and and the thing that's amazing about it, you'll have to excuse the, the listeners, re, the watchers will have to forgive my forgive my language here, but New Yorkers, the original fuck you people. You want to tell me what to do? Yeah, fuck fuck you. you. Right. Uh, they did it this time. They really did it. And the, fa- the famous saying it's is... It's a, a remarkable thing what happened in New York. The famous retort in New York is when you say, say to somebody, fuck you, they go, fuck you, fuck, fuck me, fuck you. you know? <laughs> I mean, that's yeah. so New York. Yeah. yeah. But, you know, given how New Yorkers normally behave, they did this right. I'll With tell you, I don't Governor think... Cuomo there every morning saying, saying it over and over and over again, it worked. I don't think. That this was unusual for New Yorkers because New Yorkers, once they have a task in front of them, roll up their sleeves and do it. No, uh-huh. you know? I think you're right. Yeah, and and it it it's what he refers to every day as New York tough. You know, and, Cuomo does. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And and he also says, but we're also New York smart and New York loving. You know. Now imagine, Alex. Imagine if we had a president who had been behaving that way through all of this. Well, I, you know, I, every day I watch him and I say, I wish he were president. We'd be through this well, Whether already. him or not, just any person behave in the same way. We would, as a country, and individual states too, be an entirely different place with the, with the virus. New York proves that. Yeah, oh. yeah, yeah. Uh, but, but it's, you know, it, it's pretty amazing. It's pretty amazing what we've done here in New York. And now we're having to keep people from other states from coming in, or if they do, they have to quarantine themselves for 14 days. You know, I've often wondered how that quarantine works. How is the 14 days in in force? And if you're in a hotel, okay. who's cleaning the hotel rooms afterwards? Well, I would. Well, he, to here's the thing: in, 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 the ways they're trying to get it is when you get off the plane, they make you sign a thing saying you acknowledge the fact that you have to be quarantined for 14 days. If they're in cars coming from out of state, you can tell by the license plate. And then there's some people that slip under the radar, you know. Hey, I just looked. You know, we've run out of time. Uh, and fast. Uh, and, and I love these these chats with you. I have for how, I don't know how long we've been doing them now. but More than a year. More than, definitely more than a year. 
Uh, but I really just enjoy them. And of course, we're both in red today. Did you see? Huh? We're oh, both in red today. We, we are in red, aren't we? Oh, I didn't notice that. Yes, we are in red. I wish I had a 1941. Um, yeah, well, you can get them. They're on. Uh, they're on. Uh, <laughs> I bought all the a whole bunch of these uh, from uh, uh, Amazon. Oh. Anyway, Ronnie Bennett can be found at timegoesby.net. That's her blog, and uh, she can be found here every couple of weeks. Thank you so much, Ronnie. Love you, dear. Good to see you, Don. Bye.